Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I like to do is kind of go through the step-by-step -step process for how to graph an ellipse. And not really going to kind of go through an example because I have multiple examples on that. Uh, but I just want to kind of go through the process that you're going to need to use when graphing an ellipse. Um, now first of all, I have two equations for the ellipse. Here is when my major axis is horizontal. Here is going to be where my major axis is going to be vertical. Um, but you know you could look at you could have um, an equation that's probably going to look something more like this. I don't know for you know that'd be like your general statement of your equation, all right? And all this kind of I just made that up. Use this as a kind of example when I'm trying to rewrite things. So the first thing we need to do is identify what is the center, all right? Oh, I'm sorry. Not the first thing, I changed that. Um, the first thing we're going to do is want to make sure we write it into our center form. We want to make sure it's in one of these forms. So we have if, in a, if we have it in like our standard form, you know, a times x squared um, plus bx plus cy squared plus dy equals e, then we're going to want to rewrite that crazy equation so that it's in a format in these two because it's going to be very difficult for us to be able to identify the center, the, um, the vertices, the covertices, and the foci when it's not in that format. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that it's in our, um, our center kind of form, which I call it. Then the next thing we want to do is identify the center and plot it, right? Remember, we're trying to graph this. So the center can easily be formed as h and k when it's in these two formats, all right? So we identify the values of h and identify the values of k, and then go ahead and plot them on the graph. The next thing is we want to identify a and b. Now, when we're dealing with an ellipse, a is always going to be larger than b. Remember, a represents the distance um, from the center to your vertices. And when we're dealing with an ellipse, we have a major axis and a minor axis. The vertices and the foci all lay on the major axis, which is longer than the minor axis where the two covertices lie on. So if you notice here, here my major axis is horizontal because my larger value is going to be a squared and my smaller value, value is going to be our b squared. So we look at these two values and we say, all right, a squared is equal to 9, so therefore a is equal to 3. So when I'm doing this, I guess I just kind of go, we find the center, hk, so in this case it's 5 positive 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2, right? So you say, all right, there's my center. Now, since my a is under my x, I know that's a horizontal major axis. That means I'm going to be going left and right to find my vertices. If the larger number a was under my y, that means I'd have a vertical major axis. That means I'd be, my vertices would be on a major axis that is vertical. So identify my a and my b. In this case, b is equal to 2. Um, and then I need to use my a, my a and my b to find the value of c. So I can use this equation, which is the relationship between my values of a, b, and c for an ellipse. And I find my a, b, and c. And I, again, I don't want to go through this whole equation, but the main important thing that I want to drive home is how we plot the given points. Again, the major thing to understand is where my major axis is. And a lot of times I think it's helpful for us to be able to identify or to graph the major axis. So now I know that my major axis is horizontal, I'm actually going to graph this little dotted line. And I'm going to call that my major axis. And what's so important that I want you to remember is when you know your major axis, you know that your vertices all lie on that major axis. So therefore, I'm going to go left 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 and right 3, 1, 2, 3. So those are what I call my vertices. Now, the major axis and the minor axis are perpendicular. So once I know my value of b, that's going to be my covertices. Those are going to be up and down on my minor axis, which would be up 2 units and down 2 units. And those are what we call my covertices. Now, I guess I might as well do this here. Um, b squared equals a squared minus b squared. So therefore, I have. 4 equals 9 minus um, c squared, subtract 9. So it's going to be the square root of 5, which is like 2 point, um, two point something. So 1, 2, so, so c squared equals 5, square root, square root. Not a big deal, but notice that I go ahead and find my value of c, which is going to be the square root of 5. And then again, the important thing to understand is that when you're plotting your points, that your center the foci and the vertices all lie on your major axis. So therefore, you just identify each of the values and then plot them left or right as long as your major axis is horizontal. Again, if my major axis was vertical, then I'd do the same thing 
um, going up and down. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the basic steps to graphing an ellipse. Thanks.